Hello everybody, uh, Tom Cherry Holmes here, and I'm actually taking and making a quick little demonstration of the INL ROM Flash Programmer for making NES cartridges for development purposes here. To show you what I'm talking about, this is the INL Retro Dumper Slash Programmer. It's commonly used for re making reproduction cartridges, but for homebrew development it's just as useful. Uh, as you can see here, you can buy it with uh, one of the, of the one or all three connectors for NES, Famicom, and Super NES cartridges here. In my case, I'm just using it for NES cartridge development, so mine doesn't have it. So with that, I'll give you a closer up look of this particular board. Hello everybody, uh, just wanted to... Whoops. I apologize. Let's try that again. This is the INL ROM Flash Programmer. Uh, it is a clone of the popular Caso Programmer for NES, SNES, and Famicom cartridges. This particular unit only has the NES connector installed, as that's the only thing I intend to actually do flash development on. And um, as you can see here, it's built around an Atmel Atmega microcontroller and some additional logic over here on the left hand side. The Atmel has facilities for programming flash devices as well which is exactly what I'm using it here for. There is a button right here to reset the programmer in the, effect, uh, in the event that uh, the programmer goes dead or locks up for some reason. I've already had that happen once uh, since I got this thing. It's no big deal. You just push the reset and use the programming software again to do your work. It plugs in via USB to any free USB port. The only issue that I had was, of course, that I needed to basically uh, I needed to install libusb and the drivers for that for all of that infinite lives provides a driver package that you can use to install all the needed software that you need to run please follow the instructions in this readme that is provided by the driver package that will save you hours and hours and hours of pain and get you up and running as quickly as possible if you follow everything in the readme you will be up and running with this particular flash programmer in about 10 minutes. So with that, I'll go ahead and show you. If you go ahead and Google for Disable Driver Signature Verification on Windows 10, you will get a page similar to this one. And there are two ways to do it. Uh, you can, of course, take and turn on test signing mode. Uh, if, but that only really works if your UEFI, um, if your UEFI secure boot is disabled. In my case, it's not, and I only want to take and do this one uh, signed, uh, unsigned driver installation just once. So for that, I will actually use the advanced boot option, where I essentially take hold down shift while I'm pressing uh, restart here, and choose troubleshoot. Select Advanced Options, go to Startup Settings, and it tells you that when you reboot you'll have the option to set these various options. The one that we're interested in is Disable Driver Signature Enforcement. So we go ahead and click Restart. And after that point, we see our startup screen here. You press 7 to disable driver signature enforcement and for that boot only, it will do this, which is just enough for us to be able to go into the Kaza Utilities folder into LibUSB Drivers and go into uh, bin and run the INF wizard which gives us something that looks like this and we subsequently go find our INL retro device which has the vendor pro vendor ID 16C0 and the product ID of 05DC we select next we verify that the data is correct click next 
and we save uh, a copy of this INF file where we can get to it. Fine. Which is kind of funny because we're going to wind up clicking install now to install it anyway. Now I've already done this so I won't go past this point but once you if you click install now at this point and you have driver signature verification disabled it will give you a window asking selling you that the driver that you're about to install is unsigned are you absolutely sure and yeah we are so we go ahead and do it once that's done you should be able to take and go into the uh, into the INL ROM programmer program and test the device but we'll do that in just a minute first we actually have to show you the flash ROM board and assemble the cartridge these, these are the boards that you get from Infinite Lives this one is a standard NROM 256 board Actually, I'm going to try to focus that up a bit more. Okay. So this is a standard in ROM 256 board from Infinite Lives. Back. Oh, the joys of autofocus. And the flash memory on the front. Please be very careful. You'll notice I have hardwood floors here. Now, assembling this into cartridge case is fairly straightforward. We have the front side of the cartridge case here. And we have the back side of the shell, which I've already preloaded with screws. And to get this ready, we're going to go ahead and put this in. Now these boards are key to these particular cartridge shells. So all you have to do is align the tops of the keys with the spacers that are already here in the cartridge shell. You'll see that everything pretty much fits in exactly as it needs to. So with that, we go ahead and we make the cartridge shell onto the cartridge casing. Make sure that everything's aligned. It'll fall right into place. Everything will get there nice and snug. Apologies if I'm having to shift this around so I can actually do this. And all I'm doing is just aligning everything so that when I push it into place, it snaps like you just heard. There's a mated case basically ready to go snap 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 ah uh, let's cut and with that we screw everything in place and she's ready to go so now that we have the cartridge now that we have everything ready we can go ahead and insert the cartridge into the programmer and start to program it. Component side to the front, as it says on the board, control uh, cartridge, con cartridge label in front, insert. And that's everything we need to do. So now that we have the cartridge inserted, we have the flash programmer configured, everything's ready to go, now we can actually run the particular software. And in the Caso, dem uh, in the Caso distribution, this is sitting inside the INL Retroprog software folder as INL Retroprog. Now I already have it running here, and we'll actually start the process.
Now the first thing that we actually have to do is we need to erase the flash program, the anything that's on this flash chip to get it ready for use. And for that we need to reprogram the header EEPROM that's present on this flash cartridge. But to do that, all we have to do is go into the uh, Kaza distribution again. And there's a folder called ROMs. Inside here there are erase ROMs for every type that the programmer can deal with. The one that we're interested in is erase PRG CHR, which basically erases the headers for both the program and chirp rings. So with that, we select, make sure header is selected absolutely for sure. Let's go ahead and test the device to make sure that the programmer is working correctly. Okay, it is, great. We then take and write the result. Write and verify. Since this is just reprogramming the EEPROM and there's very little data resulting from that, it's very quick. So after we've done this, we then go and we prepare our ROMs for, uh, for flashing. Now, my game here, which I'm actually working on right now, is Wizard of War, and I've got it sitting in my development folder. We go to it in the NESDEV here, which I have all my development stuff. And right now, it's an NES file, which if we start it, it runs just fine in the emulator as it is. Now this is an NES file which has the PRG and CHR chips combined as well as a header uh, describing the particular format of the cartridge. And in fact, if we actually look at the information for uh, this image, you can see the header information already here. It's an NROM 256 which is uh, split into 32K of PRG ROM, 8K of CHR ROM. And we're set with vertical mirroring, it really doesn't matter. I'm not using scrolling anyway. So, okay, no problem. We know this works, great. But we can't put, uh, we can't put this uh, directly on the flashcard as it is. We have to actually split it up. So to do that, we need to use a particular program called Famiron to do that. Great. Load Famiron. And we see this awesome little shaped window here that looks like a classic Famicom. We load the ROM, which is the NES file with header. And we see here that it has decoded the header and automatically selected for us the appropriate size chips to take and split this data into. Since this is an NROM 256, that means 256 kilobits of uh, ROM space. This is implemented as a 32K uh, 27C256 EEPROM and a 2764 8K CHR ROM, 40K total space. So we go ahead, we split the data. Now the thing about this particular program is that it does not tell you that it has done this. So it took me a few minutes to figure out what had actually happened or if it, in fact anything had happened at all. We go ahead and quit and go back to my development folder here. And we see that two files have been created. Um, one for the PRG bank, one for the CHR bank in the appropriate sizes. Excellent. So now we can then launch the INL ROM programmer. select the appropriate size data and we have to write each bank separately onto this flash cartridge. Okay, that's fine. So to do that, go into my development folder, select the PRG, 32KB PRG, that's great. We test the, we test the programmer just to make sure and we write the data out. And as you can see, this doesn't take very much space at all. And it works great. Okay, great. Awesome. There's the PRG. Now we do the 8KB of CHR. Loading the CHR part. 
And there we have our completed flash cartridge that we can go ahead now, remove from our programmer, load into our NES, our test NES, and play the actual game. And that's why you need to have everything prepared ahead of time. <laughs> We insert the cartridge, slap it down, turn on the deck, and there's our game. As we can see here, I've got some overscan issues I need to deal with. That's no problem, but it's good, because I can now see the actual game running, and it looks great! So there we go. So with that, that is a complete workflow on how to uh, do a test run of a particular cartridge to see if it works in a real unit. Going from the, from the C compiler into the emulator, into Famarom to split the ROMs into their split ROM types, and then finally to use INL Retroprog to write out uh, the different ROM banks to the flash cartridge and putting the result inside the NES for testing. If you guys have any questions, you can feel free to take and put them down in the comments section. But I hope this was, as, uh, was informative and hope that this will allow any interested developers to take and get up to speed quicker, even quicker than I did. So until next time guys, have fun.